Y'all love the first one, so here's five more mythical figures that actually exist. Number five on this list is Imhotep. Imhotep is one of the most known and worshipped Egyptian gods in history. He was said to be the god of medicine, and you may know him today as the antagonist in the mummy movies that starred Brendan Fraser. Imhotep was most talked about and worshipped in roughly 500 BC. In fact, Britannica writes, Imhotep's cult reached its zenith during Greco-Roman times when his temples in Memphis and on the island of Philae in the Nile River were often crowded with sufferers who prayed and slept there with the conviction that the god would reveal remedies to them in their dreams. What's absolutely insane about all this was that 2,000 years prior, Imhotep was a real guy. We don't know too much about how he was as a man, but some things can be assumed based on how he was worshipped. One thing we do know for sure was that he was born in the 27th century BCE. It's thought that Imhotep worked as the chief minister in the Egyptian king's court while he was alive. This is confirmed by an inscription on an ancient Egyptian statue of the king where it references Imhotep. Being part of the court wasn't Imhotep's only stately duties though. It's thought that he was the chief architect to the steppe pyramid at the necropolis and potentially what he's most known for was that he was a practicing physician. It's believed that Imhotep was an ancient doctor and would have been the most widely regarded doctor of his time. The legend of of Imhotep and his ancient healing ways would have snowballed as time went on and eventually over 2,000 years later he was deified and had full on cults worshipping him. Who knows? Maybe after you die if you've lived a great life, groups will start worshipping you 2,000 years down the line. I guess we can only hope. Number 4 on this list is Dracula. Count Dracula is the fictional blood sucking vampire who lives in Transylvania and stars in his own novel. Dracula, written by Bram Stoker. The book Dracula is one of the most famous English novels in the history of writing. Countless movies, TV shows, spin-offs, video games, and other pop culture things have been inspired by the original novel that's been scaring many since its first publication. Although Dracula, with his magic and mythical vampiric abilities, is certainly made up, the character was inspired by a real-life man who wasn't that far off in some aspects to the Count. Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler is the nickname that he's gotten due to his horrific actions that he committed while he was alive, but his real name is Vlad Dracula. Vlad Dracula is said to be one of the cruelest leaders to ever be in a position of power. He served as the king to Wallachia several times and was constantly engaging in conflicts with his enemies. The biggest enemy that he made for himself was the Ottoman Empire. When Vlad was a child, his father took him and his brother to a meeting with the Ottomans, and this meeting turned out to be a trap. Vlad and his brother were kept as prisoners and their father was forced to leave them behind. They were taught and raised here, but they were also tortured and grew a great resentment towards the Ottomans. It also didn't help that the Ottomans did eventually kill their dad anyways, something that the two boys weren't exactly fond of. Vlad went on to become a Romanian icon. He had their best interests at heart even though it was at the cost of everyone else. He's best known for impaling victims. This is where you take a long, sharp object and shove it vertically through someone's body. What I was unaware of though is that oftentimes you did this while the person was still alive and it could take hours to actually die. Truly a horrible way to go. NPC News writes, Though Dracula may seem like a singular creation, Stoker in fact drew inspiration from a real life man with an even more grotesque taste for blood. Vlad III, Prince of Wallachia, or as he's better known, Vlad the Impaler, a name he earned for his favorite way of dispensing with his enemies. Therefore, Dracula and his evil intentions did actually exist in a way. He may not have been sucking people's blood, but honestly, with how nuts Vlad the Impaler actually was, I wouldn't even put it past him. Number three on this list is the Berserkers. The Berserkers were a group of Viking fighters who, as you may have guessed, went berserk. In fact, they went so berserk that the legends say they weren't even humans anymore. The history collection describes them as great warriors appearing through the Norse sagas. Berserkers were soldiers who possessed the ability in battle to transform themselves into bestial forms and endure inhuman levels of pain. First recorded by the Romans, meeting Trajan's column in Dacia in the 2nd century BCE, Berserkers supposedly served as the elite vanguard of Harold Fairhair during his unification of Norway in the late 9th and early 10th centuries. Following these immense exertions, such warriors would subsequently enter into a prolonged period of weakness lasting for several hours or even days during which time they could succumb from their ordeal. Believe it or not, these berserkers were real, just not exactly how the legends say they were. These viking warriors didn't turn into literal beasts, they just became beasts on the battlefield. They would often enter this trance-like state of pure aggression where all they knew how to do was kill. This state where they 
were going berserk was thought to be caused by some hallucinogenic drugs that the Vikings would take prior to entering combat. Robin Raven writes in an article about the subject, They were careless in their fury, leading many historians to think that they used mind-altering substances to hype themselves up for battle. Berserkers may have felt as though nothing could hurt them. I personally can't even imagine going up in battle against a bunch of crazy dudes who had been nicknamed the Berserkers and were thought to turn into animals while fighting. It's no wonder the Vikings were some of the most feared fighters in all of history. Number two on this list is King Arthur. King Arthur may not have ripped a powerful sword from a stone or been accompanied by Merlin, who was actually a real person that we talked about in the first part of this series, by the way, but it is believed that he was a real man. Arthur was very likely a real man who ruled during the Dark Ages and helped get rid of the Anglo-Saxons from the British Isles. Arthur was one of the most popular legends in the Middle Ages. His adventures were vast and included the likes of the Holy Grail, his magical sword Excalibur, and the slaying of beasts and demons throughout the land, rescuing damsels in distress along the way. Most of this probably isn't true, but it was definitely based on someone. The History Collection once again writes, The historical basis of King Arthur remains uncertain. Although some historians contend Arthur never existed at all, the prevailing opinion has coalesced around the opinion that he likely did, but we nevertheless know little about his life. Both the Historia Britannum and Annals Cambria reference Arthur as a genuine historical figure, leading the Romano-British against the invading Anglo-Saxons during the 5th and early 6th centuries. His involvement at the Battle of Baden in particular is supportable, but also exemplifies the problematic nature of the historical narrative, recording he personally slew an unreasonably large 960 men. So 960 men is a lot, but it's possible that instead of Arthur slaying them single-handedly, he organized a great tactical battle and his troops did this instead. What's really interesting to me is that King Arthur and Merlin are both based on real people, work extremely close together in the stories, and yet never met each other in real life. Potentially they did meet at some point in real life and it was just never documented, thus beginning the legends that would run rampant in the Middle Ages for years to come. Number one on this list is Jesus. The fact that I didn't include Jesus in my first part of this video series is honestly kind of ridiculous if you think about it. Jesus is probably the most talked about mythical figure in all of history. Born from the Virgin Mary and conceived by the Holy Spirit, Jesus is basically the main character in the Christian religion. Wars have been fought over him, countless stories have been told of him, and miracles have been credited to him. With some people on this list, there's still some debate on whether they're real or not, but with Jesus, it's definitely confirmed. Jesus of Nazareth was born in 4 BCE and is confirmed by many writings and gospels through history. He gathered a group of followers and preached throughout the Roman territories until the authorities of these territories grew frustrated with him. Betrayed by one of his close followers, Jesus was eventually put to death by crucifixion from the order of Pontius Pilate. After his death is when the biggest controversy that most of you have likely heard about takes place his resurrection. Locked away in a cave with a massive boulder shoved on the front of it, it's believed that after three days, Jesus' body was resurrected, moved the boulder aside, and rose up to heaven to be with God. It's also been thrown around that while Jesus was alive, he could perform various miracles, like bringing people back from the dead, which gave him such a big following to begin with. These claims are currently unconfirmed and probably won't ever be proven one way or the other. However, the fact that Jesus of Nazareth was a real person, a figure that is still worshipped and followed to this day that's very true. Well, there you have it, guys. That is our list of the top five mythical figures that actually exist, part two. Please let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this list and some other mythical figures that have actually existed in the comments, please. Thanks so much for watching. I've been your host, Nicholas Playlog, and I'll catch you next time.